Remember that two-game deficit two days ago? Yeah, neither do the Rangers. Welcome to a best-of-three series after the Rangers were again best in show on Garden Ice. Hi, everyone. John Giannone, Henrik Lundqvist, Steve Valaket inside our Delta MSG studios. 4-1 the final in Game 4 on a night where, let's see, emotion and execution equaled excellence. You know, you talked about it before the game. Would there be an emotional carryover? It sure looked like there was. Yeah, that was a great first period. Uh, the emotions were high. Uh, and the key there is to keep your composure and still play a smart hockey game and the Rangers did uh, against special teams came up huge and and watching this game especially in the third period there's no question there's some frustration now yeah. for the Carolina Hurricanes they've been playing pretty good but they have not been rewarded and you can see them shooting pucks after whistles and there, there are a couple incidents where you can easily read into their frustration. Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they handle this now going back home. You know what's been frustrating for them? They only have three or four grade A chances, and Igor comes up big on them. Now, I've seen this, what has it been, 12 and a bit periods. Well, there's no reason why the Rangers can't win this series. They have to be thinking right now about the fact that we've got to go to Carolina, we've got to win one game so we can come home and finish this off because they have a step right now. They've elevated. I don't feel like Carolina has. Carolina's an elite conditioned team. They do get their shots and chances. I just don't think they have the finishers. I absolutely like the Rangers uh, yeah. and their chances here. They have the special teams, which is a massive part here the power play is so much better for the Rangers versus Carolina yeah. and watching their power play out there it's deflating for a team yeah. when when it's hard to score and you get your power play out there and really opportunity to get back in the game and nothing happens that's hard to sit on the bench and watch this and you can sense the energy goes down and the second part of this is Igor yeah. to go down the best of three series your special teams are hot your goalie's hot they have a really good chance. They have a really good chance. And the Hurricanes continue to be a hurricane at home and, I guess, a gentle breeze on the road. 0-5 <laughs> and, and, and now outscored 21-8 to eight on the road in these playoffs. Tonight, I think, guys, was all about that first 12 minutes yeah. or so highlighted at the 11.38 mark when Jacob Truba seized upon his moment against Max Domi, who did tonight what he did two nights ago at the very end of the game and paid the price. So... There was a lot of talk about this before the game, and they delivered. The Rangers wanted to assert their physicality on Carolina, and they did it oh. in a way that was legal, and they didn't get penalized. And I can't believe Truba has to answer again, but Lorenz is in a tough spot here. He has to fight because it's his role in this instance that he's on the ice for. I think that if he could have a do-over, he wouldn't do it because he gets penalized on an instigator, the Rangers go on the subsequent power play, and then they take care of work. And all this did, all of this physicality, all of this really just warmed the Rangers up to be able to get on the power play and feel the puck. When you see Panarin and Zibanejad being able to roll around the up top and Fox, it's all because of a sacrifice that Truba made to allow this goal here from Vetrano that comes after a minute and a half of power play one being out there and establishing themselves. Power play two comes out there and they pick up right where they left off. But it all starts with being smart being direct and not taking any penalties. They were really sharp. And we were sitting upstairs watching this game and, and to get your top players out there, you get that opportunity to hold on to pucks, making plays, because not only did they have the power play, the energy was there. They created so many chances before they even scored the goal. So they, uh, if you compare it to Carolina, where they felt probably a little deflated every time the power play came out, that the Rangers, they actually felt that energy from their top guys being out there and really pushing the pace and creating so many good chances. Yeah. It was amazing to watch their power play. So the, the hit, absolutely, but also how that power play followed that hit up with, with that type of energy. That, that was great. It's about having the puck on your stick if you're a top-end guy in the playoffs where there's a lot of pressure, there's no time, there's very little space. But when do you get that? When you're on the power play, you have an opportunity to achieve that if you do it the right way. Look, go back to games one and two. The Rangers couldn't get off the wall when they were on the power play. Mm -hmm. Now they've got time on their stick, they're dancing around, they're feeling good. That carries over to their five on five play. So that was huge for them. It absolutely did. Just two minutes and 11 seconds after that goal, a goal where Cop and Fox contributed on Vetrano's third of the playoffs. 
Cop and Fox would contribute again with a big help from Ryan Lindgren to make it 2-0. Yeah, you know, look at this group right now and how they're digging in once again on the face-offs. This is what you're looking for. You want to be able to have a face-off that dictates how you're going to get possession. And when the Rangers do this, they're able to set up and make their game plan happen, which let's not forget, it's a man-on-man -man system that Carolina is playing in their own zone. And when Fox finds himself down there, he gets lost. The chip in from center ice, we saw this a lot in this game, where the Rangers got it in deep, they were able to get to work because the dump was smartly placed. Ronta wasn't able to get to it. Fox is able to dive down. He does that a lot and does it well, and he does it sharply. Pool noodle right there, boys. This is the key right here. The yep. kick. <laughs> to keep the puck alive for the Rangers in the offensive zone. Instead of going back and, and for a change to get a stick, he keeps the play alive. That, that's such an important part in this play and for this goal to actually happen. 100%. Great delivery from Lindgren, too. Fox, is that where he's supposed to be, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think that's a big part of the confusion. You have to, you have to understand the man-on-man -man the defenseman that drives middle of the ice, he gets picked up by somebody else. Somebody that's net front can drag the centerman or the defenseman that's in front all the way to the blue line and switch. That causes ind indecision. I mean, the, the important part there is as long as your teammates are aware that he's going to play like that, yeah. it's fine. Yep. But you can't have a D run around and, and play their own game. But everybody on this team knows Fox's game. He's going to be there once in a while. So the important part is just to have a forward cover him up. If you don't have that, then you're in trouble. But the guy's been playing with him now for a couple yeah. of years. And I think after a couple of weeks, if you're a new player, you understand what type of game he plays. So the important part is to cover up for a demon like that. Is that goal not just stealing a page from the textbook of how Carolina plays? Yeah. Right? P positionless in the offensive zone? Right. A little bit. Yeah. You yeah. Know, Winning like, five puck battles, yeah. using your feet. And, shoot, yeah. retrieve. Shoot, retrieve. That's the game. And Carolina, is, this is not a team that's going to go away by any stretch of the imagination, but you can beat them at, your own, at their own game if you know how to play it. And it seems to be like the adjustments are being made. Mm -hmm. The Rangers are in charge here, guys. I mean, they've got two hands on the steering wheel right now at this point in the series. Yeah, and then second period came. Rangers led it to nothing. First 16 minutes or so, basically, Igor Shesterkin with a couple terrific saves, one on Tara Vinen, a post from Natchez, and then all of a sudden the Rangers decide that they're going to try to score a third goal. I mean, for a lot of that second period, guys, it sort of looked like they were going into the early prevent mode, up two goals, yeah. and then they get an opportunity in Mika Zibanejad. When, when you watch the, the both second and third period, the Rangers are just doing enough to keep it away from, from Carolina coming back into this game. They're pushing, they're pushing. Eager has come up with a couple big saves, but for the most part, they're in very good structure in their own end. And then they get one or two chances and they score. So they, they're just, I think they trust their game plan so much. So even though they get pushed back, they, they relax. They know exactly what they need to do. And, and they also have this feeling of, they know how to win. Mm -hmm. They've done it so many times throughout the year. And that's a skill itself, to not get nervous or, or stressed about the other team making a push. Yeah. They've been here so many times and they handle it really well.